good afternoon. So, we've got a range of devices that are being connected to the internet and they are creating vast quantities of data. This is often referred to as the Internet of Things. One of the problems we have is how can we best analyze that vast quantity of data? Is the computer the best tool for the job? Within data science, we have information graphics, we have machine learning. Are these able to help us identify that hidden nugget of information? Or, in effect, are we just looking for a needle in the Internet of Things haystack? So, what is the Internet of Things? It is the inclusion of software, sensors, and network connectivity into a range of consumer electronics or things. In 2014, 85 million vehicles were shipped worldwide. Each one of these cars had somewhere between 60 to 100 sensors on board. These were for engine management, safety, and security. By 2020, it is anticipated that there will be about 200 sensors per vehicle. And with the increase in volume of sales, this will equate to roughly 26 billion new devices on the road. And this does not include the driverless cars. We've also got wearable medical technology coming on stream. We've got patients having their vital signs monitored, uh, their heart rate, their blood pressure, glucose levels. With the introduction of Apple's iWatch, developers are increasing the number of vital signs that can be measured. And that's also going to have an impact in the number of patients who can be monitored. It's anticipated that this year alone, 100 million devices will be shipped in this sector. And how about the connected house? British Gas recently introduced the Hive system. This is a way of getting customers to remotely control their central heating at home. And with remote control locks, alarms, and security cameras, we can anticipate roughly 26 trillion devices connected to the internet. An example of this was one Friday night, my mother dropped my son off at my house when I was still at work. She let herself in. Shortly after arriving, she gave, gave me a call to say, I'm here, we're here safely. And I said, yes, I know, I saw you arrive. Oh, and by the way, Shall I put the central heating on for you? With all this connectivity, what are the benefits? And is Big Brother really watching us? Well, Gartner anticipate that household bills will be reduced by about 15% with the connected house. And with the NHS expected to save about six and a half billion a year through the implementation of wearable medical devices. What price do we put on the peace of mind that, th that this gives patients and their family? Business is also getting in on the act. The uh, Business and Local Government Data Research Center here at the university is working with a company to help improve its analytics. This company has got an app that monitors shopping patterns. So if you install it onto your phone, they can work out what you're liable to buy. So if you're in the high street in a shoe shop, they're going to think, okay, this guy's after a pair of shoes. 
a rival shop in the same high street may be able to send you an offer through to your phone saying, you come into our store within the next 10 minutes, we will give you a discount on the price of a new pair of shoes. Now, they're not the only ones. We've got insurance companies as well introducing black boxes into cars. These are there to analyze your driving style. How, how do you brake? How do you accelerate? Insurance companies are able to reward the safe drivers with discounts on their premiums. So how do we counter the charge that Big Brother, this George Orwell or Orwellian concept of an overbearing state watching our every move? Well, we've got legislation in place. The US government recently enacted the um, bill setting out the terms and conditions with which the NSA could monitor US citizens. We do need legislation to protect our identity and our data. But to get the benefits of big data, data needs to be shared but it needs to be shared in a safe and sensible manner. And with big data potentially, or the Internet of Things, potentially generating 35 trillion gigabytes by the year 2020 on an annual basis, surely that's too much information, even for Big Brother to handle successfully. So. How do we deal with that volume of data? The human brain has a limited capacity to store and process data. It's like all machines. Estimates vary wildly as to how much it can handle. Some say 10 gigabytes, and it ranges up to about 10 terabytes. So yes, we do need a computer of sorts. The world's population by 2020 is anticipated to reach about 10 billion. And a growing proportion of that population is going to be creating data. Now, some estimates vary, but uh, it's probably going to be safe to assume that we can say each person will be generating about 3,500 gigabytes of data per year. That equates to about nine and a half gig of data a day. Now, I've worked as a consultant for a number of years within the big data area. And rule of thumb was basically one hour of processing per thread would basically deal with one gigabyte of data. So for each person on the planet, we're going to have to spend about nine and a half hours processing data. It's probably not enough computing power on the planet to deal with that. So how are we going to deal with that? We've got uh, a couple of tools out of data sciences, such as uh, data visualization and information graphics, and we've even got machine learning. Now, infographics is great at providing an overview of a large data set. But that is not going to find that nugget of information that I talked about at the beginning. To identify that needle, we need something else. One of the other tools that we could possibly use would be machine learning. Machine learning is great at identifying patterns. It uses past history of data to refine the process. And the patterns that machine learning can be applied to are becoming increasingly more sophisticated. So perhaps that is the tool that we need to work on when we're trying to identify or find that needle. But how are we going to identify it? We're still going to need analysts. Now, an analyst could be anyone in this room today. 
It could be the patient whose wearable medical device has basically said, yes, it is now time for you to take your next batch of medication. It could even be the highly paid, highly trained analyst within a company that has basically said, ah, I found a trend. We need to start producing more of a particular product. It could even be the device itself. Its wearer has just had a massive heart attack and it's sending information to the emergency services to alert them to that fact. So, we will always need analysts. The analysts may be there at the beginning of the process to be able to tell the computer how we are going to process the data. And it doesn't matter how intelligent the machine becomes, we're also going to need someone at the end of the process to act on it. So thank you very much and have a good TEDx day.